Well, welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 212, Supatizing with Fractions. Supatizing has been heavily talked about for our young learners, but supatizing is so powerful for upper elementary kids for both fractions and multiplication. I love it for both. In this particular episode, I'd like to explore what subitizing with fractions looks like. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. So let me back up just for a second in case you are not familiar with subitizing. Subitizing is the ability to instantly recognize how much or how many without needing to count. So if I hold up three fingers, you don't have to count one, two, three. Your brain just knows there's three. That's subitizing. And we spend a ton of time in the early grades helping kids subitize small amounts with whole numbers. Now, why does this matter for fractions? Well, think about what fractions actually are. Fractions are a repetition of a unit that is less than one. I know we talk about fractions as part of a whole, but that is really a limiting view of fractions for kids. The numerator is the count or number of items that you have. And the denominator is the denomination or size of those items. So with two thirds, we want students to think of that as two, that's the count, the number of things we have, one third pieces. One third is the denomination. It's the size of those pieces. And one of the best ways to help them understand that is by developing the four early numeracy concepts, which I've discussed in other videos that I will link in the show notes or down in the description below this video. Um, But we want those four early numeracy concepts developed around fractions because that's really what fraction sense is made out of. One of those early numeracy concepts is subitizing. So what does subitizing even look like with fractions? Well, first off, it needs to be small numbers. (laughs) Even as adults, our ability to subitize is around three to five things, unless it's in some kind of a pattern or it's grouped into those smaller amounts. So like, think about this. When kids first recognize the dice pattern for six, they don't actually see the six things. They see three and three or they might see it some other way, but three and three is typical because of the way the pattern is. And then later they start to just recognize that pattern as six things. When we are working with fractions, the quantities that we use for numerator and denominators need to be small or else kids will count instead of subitizing. If I show a rectangle divided into eight equal parts with six of them shaded in, Kids will not be able to subitize that. However, if the rectangle is cut into fourths and I shade in three of them, that is subitizable. Technically, they are equivalent, right? But one is subitizable and one is not. So why is subitizing with fractions helpful for our students? Well, just like subitizing with whole numbers, it helps children create visual representations of abstract quantities. And when they have visuals, they can compose and decompose those quantities as visuals because that's that's way easier than with the symbols, right? So why does that matter though? It really is the foundation of so many things in mathematics. But one example, is that they will actually understand what's happening when they add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So let's do an addition example here. Uh, Let's think about if I showed a visual that is three-fourths and three-fourths, like two visuals of three-fourths. If you're watching the video, you see it. If they can't subitize, 
the students tend to count each piece to figure out the total amount that's being shown. And the total amount here is six one fourth pieces. But if they're counting actually, they are more likely to say the image is showing six eighths, which is the number one way that kids get those addition problems wrong because they just want to add numerators and add denominators, right? But students who subitize see the groups. They aren't focused on individual pieces, and so their strategies for adding tend to be grouping strategies. So you might hear kids say something like, I saw that the first rectangle is just missing one fourth. So I took one from the other rectangle so that it, it made a hole, and there's just two fourths left. Another example of how subitizing is helpful is helping students understand equivalent fractions. Think back to when I just said I wouldn't use a visual for six eighths for subitizing. Well, I actually would, but only if I'm using it alongside three fourths or actually under it. I would do a quick image flashing three fourths, ask the students what amount was shown, then I'd flash two images at the same time, and then I tell them, you have to tell me if these quantities are the same or which one is showing a larger fractional amount shaded in. And in that next image, I'm gonna show three fourths towards the top of the screen and six eighths underneath it. I am not expecting them to subitize the six eighths, right? But I'm expecting them to see how it relates to the three fourths and use that relationship. And that right there is the power of subitizing. It allows students to focus on relationships between quantities because they aren't bogged down by counting. Now, counting is important, and yes, even counting with fractions, but subitizing, remember that's the ability to tell how many without counting, subitizing is also very important for fraction sense development. If you haven't done much fraction subitizing, I've got a free download of fraction subitizing cards. I'll link them below in the description, or you can find the link at the show notes, which is buildmathminds.com 212. If you want to delve even deeper into developing subitizing and all the number sense concepts, check out my flexibility formula course. There's one specifically for third through fifth grade educators that builds your understanding of all eight concepts and how to help your students go from mindlessly following procedures to thinking flexibly when solving problems. Go to buildmathminds.com to learn more. All right, I'll see you again next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists. I hope that this helped you build your math minds so you can build the math minds of your students. 